Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to making, making video games in Game Maker. Alright, so uh, last time I officially, I officially finished off the basic uh, computer graphics milestone of this project, and today I'm going to start getting into gameplay. Um, I've been debating with myself what exactly I want to work on gameplay-wise first, and... I um I added a couple of the uh, the more basic gameplay related cards to um, a codex hand for this week, and I decided that the one I'm going to go with is going to be focusing on getting an input system in the game. Uh, that is going to be Juju's input system, and probably I'll see how far I can get with getting a character that can walk around and getting a camera to follow the character, and um, some kind of entity hierarchy. So I'm going to do something a little bit um. A little bit dangerous today, and I'm going to download the very first alpha version of Input 6, uh, and I'm going to, to try that out and see how it goes. Um, I was strongly considering putting this off and just hard coding a bunch of like keyboard presses for now, but one, um, I do want to do a little bit of testing on the Input 6 alpha to see if any anything like bad happens. Um, and if anything does, I will relay that information to Juju and Align and uh, hopefully they will be able to deal with it in short time. And also, I just don't want to have to like erase a bunch of work uh, later on um, in a couple weeks and completely redo it like that anyway. So I'm going to download the input asset package. That is not that is that is not the right project. That is that is the, the game about ducks. OK, um, the one I'm looking for is this, and we can drag input into this, and we can have a look around. Um, all right, so there is a couple um, relevant input-related um, included files. There is the entire whole big input actual file system. Um, let's see. I don't know if I need the test load mapping.json, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it in anyway. Um, if I don't need that, I'll just I'll just delete it. So, uh, let's see. To to set this up, uh, this is something that's actually changed as initial configuration. To set this up, I will go into the configuration um, folder in here, and the the most important one should be input config. Where is it? Verbs down at the bottom, and this is going to be where we configure our you know. Um, various inputs, so, you know, left, right, up, down, um, accept, pause, that sort of thing. Um, I do want to make videos on input eventually, but I've been advised to hold off on doing that until input 6 is a little bit more, uh, shall we say, established and less alpha-y. Um, let's see, some other things I may be interested in configuring. That's going to be for, uh, for like, aiming up, down, left, right um, in, in third person, which will, I think, eventually be relevant to me. I'm just going to have a look at some of these other things. Config gamepad. So this is like gamepad um, access sensitivity and and that sort of thing. All right. I don't know if I want to deal with Steamworks in this project. I don't. It's obviously not something I'll have to do unless I actually put this on Steam. I don't know if I want to go that far with this. Uh, config icons. Uh, this is something that is going to warrant looking at later. I think. Um, if I want to create something like a control binding menu and I want to have actual like, you know, sprites for the, the input buttons and stuff. Um, there's one which, uh, you know what, I think verb groups, yeah, I think I'm not going to, um, not going to look through any of these others now. So, uh, keyboard and mouse, so up, uh, the defaults that the inputs come with is fine for up, down, left, right, you know, um, either the literal arrow keys or uh, WASTI. Uh, except, um, given what kind of game this is going to be, I think I'm going to make this um, the E key on the keyboard. I might add a uh, an alternate later for, like, um, space, uh, if it comes down to that. Cancel for backspace. Um... I'm trying to think of like uh, like Skyrim controls. Uh, what would that be? That would be tab. Um, action would be the. Uh... All right, I'm not gonna. Let's back up a little bit. I'm not gonna go with accept. I'm gonna go with action. Um, I think I'm gonna have uh, instead of cancel. I'm gonna call it back. Um, special. 
Uh, if we if we assume that we have four primary inputs like the A, B, X, Y buttons on a face button on a gamepad, uh, I'll have action back, probably jump and like cast a spell. So I can name that accordingly. And I'm just going to give those verbs those names. Um, let's see. Do I want to give action an alias for both the like the enter key and or space bar or um, yeah. So to have uh, multiple inputs alias to the same verb, uh, you can put them in an array. Uh, back, I guess we can have a back alias to backspace also. Uh, like that. Um, jump. I go like back and forth constantly on whether I want jump to be shift or control. Um, or space, I think. For this game, I'll do space. And do I want an alias for a jump? I don't think so. Not now, anyway. And cast. Um, Wizard Duck's cast button is C, which I kind of have come to like. Oh, and then there is, of course, also the, um... Input binding mouse button and the uh, left. So basically cast by clicking. And I suppose, should I have jump also be alias to the right mouse button? I can do that. Um, so those are going to be our four primary actions, I suppose. Shoot is kind of irrelevant. Um, that's been replaced by cast, which is a different set of keys. And um, pause, that's fine. VK escape, that's pretty universal. Uh, I'll also say unpause. No, I won't. I already have a uh, back, which is the backspace key. Uh, some other verbs, other common verbs are going to be a uh, run. And I think this will be shift. Um, all right, so like primary interaction, uh, back, jump, cast a spell, uh, run, pause the game. So thinking again about wizard ducks, in Wizard Ducks, you cycle through your spell list with uh, the Q and E keys on the keyboard or the triggers on the gamepad. And I don't think I'm actually going to need that in this game. Uh, once more, speaking of the early Harry Potter games, you basically have an auto spell system, so you don't have to select your equipped spell. You just wave your wand at an object that can have a spell cast on it, and you cast. Um, which, one, makes gameplay easier because you don't have to constantly fiddle around in menus or uh, selecting your spells and whatever, but it also just makes it easier to implement because I don't have to worry about bindings for like the user interface for selecting your spell. Um, okay, if I do anything anything else like, um, I don't know, have a, have a key for a crouch or a crawl or sneak or something like that, I'll add them later. Um, but not now. So uh, touch inputs I will not be needing. Um, I don't know, maybe if this game somehow makes it onto the Nintendo Switch and, and I have to deal with touch screens, then we can deal with touch. But uh, until then, I'm going to not think about that. Uh, I'm going to align all of these, heh, align, because um, it just annoys me if they're not. Uh, up is going to be the, uh, the left stick vertical. Um, or the, uh, you know, the, the D-pad hat, um, I guess, if you want. That's fine. Uh, action. I need action to be, I think, GP face one. Uh, that is going to be my talking to people button. Back is going to be uh, GP face two. Uh, so that's going to be the B button. Um, jump is, is the Y button on the Xbox controller. Um, face for because I want, you know, jump, you go up in the air, I want that to be on the top of the face buttons. Um, okay, so that's going to be face four. Uh, y button on, on Xbox and um, triangle on, on PlayStation. Um, and cast is going to be face three. It won't be, it won't be on the top on Nintendo controls if, if you're playing with one of those, but um, 
Nintendo's always been a little weird about that. I, I definitely prefer Xbox's face button layout. Um, aim up, down, left, right. So this is going to be, I believe, emulating a mouse uh, for the gamepad. So the game the gamepad verb list is going to need to have these in addition to uh, the other ones. Um, shoot, we call this one run. No, we, we just got rid of that one. I, I do have run, however. Uh, that's going to be... I guess I can um, I can stick those on the left and right bumpers. And pause the game can be the start button uh, or the... Is it the start button on Xbox? Start and select or is it start and back? I don't remember. Um, I'll also alias uh, back to input. Um, Input binding gamepad button GP underscore select. Probably going to be mostly used when someone tries to back out of a menu, but um, it can also possibly work in, you know, conversation and that sort of thing. Okay. Is that it for input configuration? All right, let me go and commit this. Ah, 602 changed files. This project is insane. All right, that took a solid minute to commit. Uh, what next? So, I probably should test this just to make sure that it doesn't, like, explode in my face before anything else gets done, but I will test it in a minute. Um, creating the entity hierarchy and creating a player of sorts, I think, would not be a bad thing to do. I'll just have, like, a, like a, a box or a barrel or something represent the player temporarily until I actually get, like, some kind of design for players in. Um, character can walk around, uh, camera follows character. You know what? That sounds good enough. So let's, uh, let's get out of the input folder and, uh, should I make another group and call it, like, gameplay or something? Um, let's see, let's create ourselves an object. This is going to be our, our super object, which all, like, other game objects, uh, derive from. I'm going to call that entity. Uh, some of you may have been noticing recently that, like, in, for the longest time, my, my naming convention for, uh, like, Game Maker objects has been to just do, like, Pascal case as if it was, like, a, a Java class or a C-Sharp class or something like that, but recently I've basically dropped that in favor of just going OBJ underscore like every other Game Maker users. That's probably largely because, like, structs and actual constructors have taken the place of my Pascal case objects, but, um, I just thought I would... I'll give a nod to that just to, in case anybody was wondering what was up with that. Um, I forget, I talked a little bit about like code style in the, the introduction video to the series. I don't remember if I explicitly um, drew attention to this. I'm gonna mark this as not visible. So we're going to, instead of drawing all, uh, having, having all these game objects draw themselves at whatever depth, I'm going to have uh, all game objects be drawn in a loop in probably this draw event here, somewhere around here. Um, but we'll get to that later. I don't know if I'll get to that today. Um, next, let us go create ourselves, I'm gonna say obj underscore character or something, or npc because that's fewer, fewer letters. Uh, we can uncheck that visible box too. Um, the parent can be set to obj underscore entity. And lastly, not lastly, but thirdly, obj player. I'm actually going to have derived from npc because the player, um, in a lot of respects, is just an npc with extra bits stuck on. Uh, parent can be npc. Um, I'm going to have the, the player be drawn in a very similar way to like regular npcs. The, the code for moving around and checking for collisions is going to be the same. The only difference is that the player is going to have like, you know, an input. Um, it's going to read input from, from the user. Okay. Um, there's going to be a lot of other other entity types. Um, I'm going to try to keep the inheritance chain like somewhat sane in this, um, in this game. I know that I've kind of gotten a little carried away with inheritance in games in the past like this, but I'm going to try and um, follow the guideline of have the inheritance tree be very wide but shallow. So... Uh, we'll have a lot of special objects that are branching off obj underscore entity, but we shouldn't have any, like, inheritance chains that are, like, five levels deep. Like, maybe we'll have a treasure chest, uh, which inherits from obj underscore entity, and maybe we'll have, like, a special treasure chest that inherits from the base treasure chest, but hopefully it won't ever really go deeper than that. 
All right, what fun. It's not very complicated. That didn't exactly involve any code, but we can say we did it. Uh, to have to have them draw, um, for the time being, let's say all the stuff in the 3D world, we can leave this here. Uh, that's just going to be all my test objects, but um, it won't be there for long. I can say with obj underscore entity, Uh, event perform ev underscore draw. So the, all these are going to be set to invisible, so they're not going to draw on their own. Uh, but I can invoke the draw events manually by setting event perform. So I'm going to do that. Um, I think for now, uh, we're going to have obj player, and let's give obj player a draw event, which is going to contain basically just like, let's draw a... Uh, do I want to draw a barrel or a, a block or let's draw a barrel at my position. So matrix build this um, self.x, self.y, self.z. Um, the rotation, I'm going to leave that alone for now. This is going to get fancier. Um, speaking of self.z, I do need the entity to, uh, you know, I'm going to make that a variable definition. Uh, self.z is going to be initialized to zero. So all entities are going to have one of those. We're not going to be like instance creating anything and having to worry about that anyway, uh, since I am going to be hopefully uh, loading in levels from a uh, basically a unity scene. I'm going to have to start thinking about that soon, aren't I? Got to deal with collisions before I think about that. Anyway, let's see. Let's go and create ourselves a player. And um, how about I do this in, uh, in room start? Should I do this in room start? I'm probably really not going to be using rooms at all. I'm not going to use room start. Um, for now, I'll just hard code an instance create an instance of the player. Uh, instance create depth, uh, let's say zero, 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 uh, obj underscore player. Uh, no, uh, no special parameters. And we're going to have the player exist at a, a certain position in the room. And the player should draw themselves. And uh, yeah, that would do it. So that's going to have to be um, obj underscore game dot meshes. All right, treat an obj game like a singleton, like the singleton that it is officially. I do that a lot. Some people really don't like doing that. Oh, the barrel is lying on its side, not not standing up. All right, forgot that I oriented it that way. I don't care right now. Obviously, that's not what the player is going to look like forever. So the next order of business is going to be having, one, the player move around, and two, the camera following the player. Um, the player that's being created now is basically like a free cam. You can think of this as a debug camera. Um, I feel like I should... I feel like I should give the player their own camera in the, uh, the create event, self.camera is going to be, and like, I'll keep the free camera around for if I do want a debug camera later on. But for now, um, we can, uh, we can give the player a camera object. Um, and, uh, the camera object for those who don't remember is basically just a data structure containing all this. And I can do things like call an update method on it. I can do things like um, uh, apply the matrices and do all that fun stuff. Did I not put the skybox code in the camera? I guess I didn't. I meant to. I'm going to put the skybox code in the camera later on. Anyway, I'm going to need to give this a method that, um, that allows it to follow the player around. So uh, let's say, let's start with this. Let's have an update camera. Uh, method. Um, do I have uh, variables for like camera following distance? 
I don't, although I, I do have pitch and direction for the camera, which is used in the free cam. Uh, let's say self dot distance is going to equal, and I can make the, the default camera distance 160 or so. Um, camera dot x dot, uh, camera dot, um, x2, y2, all right, yeah, x2 can be self dot x, self dot camera dot y2 is going to be self dot y, self dot help camera dot z2 is going to be self dot z. Um, so our, our look at point for now is going to be our player's origin. I'm probably going to offset the camera a little bit to have it look at not the uh, the player's exact x, y, z, but like some point like above the player's shoulder so that the player's body is hopefully um, generally will not be blocking the, um, the view of the camera because that's that's a, that's a basic camera mistake that a lot of people make in 3D that um, could easily be avoided by offsetting the camera in some direction. There's a bunch of ways you can you can deal with it. Um, I always have to remember, however, uh, exactly what to do about like offsetting the camera uh, behind behind the player. All right, it's just going to be the opposite of this. So this is the when you have a third-person camera, it's basically the inverse of the first-person camera. So you set the uh, x2, y2, z2 as the the player's origin point, and then like the the x, y, z itself is going to be like um, self dot camera dot x2, y2, z2. Um, Minus the cosine of that, plus the sine of that, plus plus the sine of this. Um, and that should uh, that should have the the camera uh, snap to the player, the player's position, and then. X up, Y up, Z up can stay the same. I'm probably not going to be dealing with, like, camera roll or anything like that. Uh, we're going to have Y uh, be the up axis, and we're not going to touch it after that. Uh, field of view aspect near, far, clipping planes. Um, okay. So I'm going to uh, make one more change before running the game, and that is going to be uh, in the draw event. Instead of... Where do we, uh, where do we set the camera? Okay, two more changes, I lied. So instead of saying self.camera.update free and then self.camera.apply, uh, we'll say um, obj underscore player dot um, camera dot apply. And uh, in, I think the player is, shall I say the player's end step, uh, we can say self.update camera. And we are going to uh, call that method to update the player's camera and the end step. So we'll process all of our movement in the step event and we'll process all of the cameras um, The cameras like snap into the player's position in the, the end step event and then everything should be ready to go by the draw event So unless things go horrendously wrong Okay, so we've got a camera which is actually Are we looking at the player? I I can't tell if like the barrel isn't there. Oh, you know what? Um, we are inside the barrel, uh, so the barrel isn't there. I'm gonna need to multiply uh, these trigonometry terms by self dot camera dot distance. Um, so that instead of just being like a distance of, of one away from the point that we're looking at, we'll actually be a distance of 160 away from the point that we're looking at. All right. Okay, so we are now looking at a barrel. That's fun, we can't do anything. Uh, we've got a camera looking at the player. And I've been going for a half an hour. Do I want to, do I want to say that's good enough? We have something that's almost like gameplay and continue, um, like I've got, I almost don't want to check off entity render loop because there's so little of it, but we've got input added so I can, I can say that's done at the end. There's a basic entity hierarchy. That wasn't very much either. Uh, the camera is following the character. It's not very interesting, but the camera is following the character. So I guess I'll check that one off. Uh, we do not have the character walking around yet. That's going to be, I think, the main focus of the next one. 
Um, okay, so I think I might do, I might think about player jumping next time, but I think next time is going to be all about getting the player to move around. And can I, uh, can I archive these three? Um, archive. Yes, please. So that's what we're going to be doing next time. We're going to be uh, getting the character to walk around, possibly jump. Uh, we're going to actually be making use of the uh, the input extension. I know I spent kind of a long time with that at the beginning of this video, uh, and then didn't end up doing it, anything with it, but uh, never mind. Uh, let's see, how are we making progress on this milestone? I know it's it's been a while since I've recorded one of these, and there's only one week in this uh, milestone gone by so far, but... Um, yeah, it's not very interesting. If I look at the, the stats as a whole... Estimated date to zero. The 23rd of November, 2030. I'm gonna try and record, uh, like, two or three videos today. So hopefully the velocity will increase a little bit. And, um... We'll knock off some more things. I'd also like to record, like, a bunch of these next week. I haven't had a lot of time for that recently because, uh... Wizard Ducks and also Houseplant Quest and some other things, but... Anyway... Uh, that's going to do it for today. My name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Uh, look for the 0 0.9 release. Uh, try to post about two game dev videos a week, so if you want to see more of this or if you want to see some, some more tutorial tutorials, I like to talk about the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, uh, look for the links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise... I hope you all enjoy this, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Syndra Larson, Rowdy Coder, Manta Ray, Harold Guidry, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Army Armbuster for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.